Hey everyone, welcome to a guide on how to get all 21 starter Pokemon in Pokemon Reborn. In this video, I'll be going over the process of how to acquire each starter, assuming that you didn't just pick that starter at the start of the game. And I will be going over each starter in order of Pokedex number uh, by generation, uh, not the order that they become available in the game. So keep that in mind and see the description for a list of when each starter becomes available if you want to jump around. Uh, one last thing I should note is that all of these clips are from the perspective of a save file that has completed the entire game and the post game. So the areas are as such. So without further ado, let's begin. Alright, first up is Bulbasaur, and to do that, you need to have 14 badges in your possession. Because uh, when you have 14 badges, you have the option to donate to a restoration project. So, what you would do is fly back to the Grand Hall, and talk to this person right here, or actually, not this person, this person. Uh, and you want to donate to the Azurine Nature Center and donate the necessary 80,000 bucket dollars. And once you do that, you will see changes to the Azurine Island. And also we have access to the basement area. So when we fly over to Poffle Academy, we can surf over to Azurine. And the way we can confirm that uh, we made the necessary donations is we can check that here, there's a building now. Uh, or there's a boat with a bigger building where there previously was a smaller building. And once we do that, uh, we can just walk through the grass and there is a small chance of encountering a Bulbasaur. Note that it does have to be daytime for a Bulbasaur to be possible. Next up is Charmander, and to do that, the first thing we would need to do is first acquire 13 badges so we have access to Neo Reborn City. And the first thing we would need to do after that is to get the Super Rod. And uh, where you would get that is you can fly over to Tansen Cove, and uh, I already did this, but you, what you would need to do is dive underwater, and then you will find a few uh, dead bodies around here. Uh, like this one, and maybe loot one of them. And then you can talk to this person right here, who will give you the Super Rod. And once you have the Super Rod, you can then fly over to Apopo Academy, and climb to the top of Pyrus Mountain. And then I'm just gonna go through this real quick. And then, you can look at the lava, and... And then, if you fish in the lava... You will encounter a Charmander. Alright, Squirtle can be found deep in the Big Spician Wasteland. And, it can be acquired once you have the 5th badge and have acquired strength. So once you do that, uh, we can fly over to Wasteland. Let's, let's start from the hideout just to make things easier. And the first thing you would need to do if you haven't done it yet is to change all of these vats that are scattered around the Wasteland to red. And that would open up a cave that leads to where we would need to go. So there are 5 in total. One of them's right here, and then another one. There's another one. There's a third one. 
There's the fourth one. And the last one. Go here. Jump off this ledge. And if you go to the right, there's the fifth one. So if you haven't done that already, you need all five of these to be red. And that opens up a cave that was locked earlier. And uh, to get to the cave, we just go this way, go up through here again. And it's this cave right here. The door would have been closed if you had not made all of those bats red yet. And the next part would be helpful if you have flash, but that's not necessary. You just basically just follow the path through these caves. And go this way. And then enter this cave. Once you do that, uh, if you look at this vat over here, uh, you can actually walk behind it. And lo and behold, if you stand just out of view uh, and go up, there's a hidden cave right here. So you would have to go through here, and then go out, go left, and then climb up this ladder and immediately back down. And then use strength, and then jump off a ledge that's hidden right behind this pillar, push this strength boulder, and then come out here. And uh, the Squirtle is here, but you can only get it if it's raining. So if it's not raining, either wait till it is raining, or if you have the weather mod password, you can modify it in the Pokemon. And right here is the Squirtle, and if we try to take it with us, then we get into a battle. Next, to get Chikorita, you would first need 14 badges and to have donated enough money to fund the Azurai Nature Center. So see the guide on getting Bulbasaur to, uh, for a guide on those steps. Once you do that, you can just go right to Azurai Island. And if you go in the nature center, and climb to the top floor, go outside, talk to this person. He's talking about a Chikorita that they found locked up, and once we do that, uh, we acquire a Chikorita. And uh, this is how you would do it if you've already passed the 13 badge Neo Reborn City. But if you, there is actually a way to get it earlier. If you have a Chimeco, you could go to this building and talk to some shady person. And if you show them the Chimeco, then they'll give you access to the Chikorita that they locked up. And to get Cyndaquil, you need access to 7th Street, which happens after Badge 8. And once you do that, uh, you can go to Lapis Ward. Oh, by the way, you also need nine red shards because you would be buying the Cyndaquil with those shards. So to access Cemetery, if you join the Magma Gang, the door is here. If you join the Aqua Gang, you would need to go to the top left corner. And then go down to 7th Street. Uh, down here. And here, we can buy Cyndaquil for 9 shards. And this Cyndaquil is the same Cyndaquil that helped us escape our cage back in Black Street Factory. Next up is Totodile, and that can be found deep within Amatrain Mountain, and you need Dive and Waterfall to access it. And that requires 12 badges. So once you have met those prerequisites, uh, you can fly over to Kelsimon. And enter Amatrine Mountain. 
and just follow this path to get to a more of a side area of the mountain. Uh, so this is where you want to reach. And uh, complete a simple ice puzzle to get the strength boulder out of the way. So then when we go up and around, then this is not blocked anymore and then we can dive down here. Go out. And go up and solve this ice puzzle. And here this time we want to go right. And then we surf. And then just go this way. And then up these waterfalls. And a total can be found just jumping around at the top here. And I recommend turning off speed up for this uh, because uh, timing is important. Once Toadel jumps, uh, you want to go to in front of the tile and then press A to talk to it, and then that will get you into an encounter. And to get Trico, the prerequisites are you need to have 13 badges and you need to have completed the events at depth. Once that is complete, you can fly over to Obsidia and return to the Devon building where the events happened and climb up to the top. And uh, it is kind of annoying to have to time walking through to avoid getting shocked, so I'm just going to take the L as far as damage is concerned. And once you climb to the top, you battle this person, and then there are three items here. One of them is the Devon Scope, and you need that. Uh, once you acquire that, you can climb back down and enter the Silk Co. building. Which is just right behind. And then talk to this person. And when you give her the Devon Scope, she will reverse engineer it and give you the Sylvan Scope. And that can be used to identify any Kecleon that are in the way. So then, you fly over to Barrel, and go into the jungle. And I'm just gonna quickly make my way to the Underroot. And then we want to go all the way to the bottom. We surf here, and now that we have Waterfall, we can access the top here. And then, uh, something unseeable in the way, but we have the Sylvan Scope, so then we can identify, and there is a horde of Keglia. So uh, we have to fight a bit of a gauntlet, and then there's a bully purple Kecleon that we have to deal with. And then once this path is clear, uh, we go here, and we see there's this Trico that's been locked up, so set it free, and then we can take it with us. Next, to get the Torchic, we need to complete a series of steps. A uh, prerequisite is we need to have 16 badges, and to have completed the events of the Battle of Agit. And... One thing I'm going to do that I think is most efficient to do right now is I'm going to fly over to Belrose Mance and pick up a family photo on a bookshelf. And unfortunately in this save file I am sort of locked out because this area changed from a post credit scene, but I'm just going to walk through walls to enter. This is what room you would normally walk into. And right here on this bookshelf, you can obtain a family picture, and we'll need this to complete this quest. Once that has been acquired, uh, we can fly over to Kalsanon, and if you haven't done this already, you need to donate enough money to, to open up this path right here. And once you've done that, and once you've finished the Battle of the Gate, you can enter this room, and there'll be this lady here. 
who will get scared, battle you, and then give you a few hints and run off. Uh, and she tells us not to follow her, but we're gonna do that anyway. So next step is to go to a gate city and enter this building. And we can talk to this person who will mention something about a creepy room in the basement, and that's weird. Uh, and they'll let us in, so sweet. We can take the elevator, and sure, let's say it's creepy this time. And there isn't really anything to do in this room, but if you look closely, there is a pattern on the floor. Some of these tiles are lighter than others. And basically what we will need to do is either memorize this pattern or probably preferably take a picture because we'll need to use this pattern elsewhere. All right, once we've looked closely enough at it, we can return to the surface and fly back to Calcino. And we would need to go into the gym. And this is... If we go to the back of the gym, you notice that some of these tiles are pink and some of them are orange, and if we step on an orange tile, it'll turn that pink. And basically, we need to set this section of the gym, uh, this tile pattern, to match the pattern in that basement. So I'm going to do that real quick. And doing so, we'll open a secret room in the back, and that's that was Caroline's old hiding spot. Right here, and then this, and then these, and then these tiles. And sweet, now there's a door here, and there's this whole other section of Kalsnot City. And we find her right here. Yeah, and we need to show her some kind of memento, but we have one. We have that picture that we randomly obtained. And we can hand that over. And we get some additional lore regarding the history of uh, that mansion being burned. And out of gratitude, she will give us a torch again. And then if you walk around long enough or use an incubator, the egg will hatch into a torch. Alright, next to get Mudkip, you would need to have 13 badges, so you have access to Neo Reborn City, and you also need an item on you that can cure poison, like an antidote. Once you've met those conditions, you can fly over to Apopple Academy. And first, we want to dive into the sunrise area of Azerine Lake. So you would get that by surfing up here, going through this tiny piece of land and dive down here. So if we go to the top left corner and go into this building, here we get the K33 key. And that can be used to open a door in the Kingsbury area. So let's get out of the sunrise area first. And the Kingsbury area can be accessed by surfing north from Apophil Academy through this tiny path right here. And we will briefly enter Paradox Ward and then enter through this opening. And now, with this giant dive spot, we want to surf all the way to the bottom right corner. And right here is Kingsbury 33. So we can unlock this door. And here we can see a sick mudkip. So if we use our antidote, then we cure the mudkip and uh, we can take it with us. Next up is Turtwig, and all you would need to do for that is you need to have access to a gate circus, and you need to have dive in your possession. You could do that by completing the dive puzzle or progressing through the story long enough for Anna to just give it to you. So now, uh, by the way, you also need three green shards. So we can talk to this person, and... And basically, Churchwood will be the prize for solving this sliding puzzle. And this puzzle is uh, a bit annoying. 
Uh, so I am going, to, and also the starting position is random, so I will be doing my best to explain the thought process behind solving the puzzle. I have the answer pulled up because I think the puzzle is already a challenge even with the answer. So way, the way I would like to do, I like to do this is uh, first solve, solve these in two by two quadrants. So first solve this top left quadrant here, then solve the top right quadrant, then do the bottom left quadrant, and then the bottom right quadrant. So let's start by solving the top left quadrant. So we, uh, if we want to get the first piece in the top left corner, uh, that is this piece right here. So we can just uh, do some manipulations to move that in the right spot. Now let's get the piece that's supposed to be here, which is this piece right here. So we can just uh, we can just do that by moving enough things around. Next, uh, we want to get this piece, which is this one, and we can do that by as such. And last but not least is this piece, which is this one right here, so we can just move that into place. So now the top left quadrant is solved. Now let's move on to the top right quadrant. Same thing, let's solve this piece, which is this one. So let's move this up. And next is this top right corner, which is this piece right here. And because there's no more space to the right of the puzzle to help move that piece into place uh, without mess, and we can't go on the left side because that'll mess up the rest of the puzzle, uh, I'm going to use a trick that's useful for solving. And that is first make sure that this piece that we want to move in is not in the row directly below the destination. So. This is fine because the piece is down one from the second row. Next, we want to move this piece one over. So move this piece that's already solved into the spot where we want the next piece to go. And then we can move this piece immediately below that. So then when we move the cursor here and clear up space, uh, we can just slide the first piece back and slide the second piece back. And uh, next we want to solve this piece, which is this one right here. So that's a simple matter of just moving this up. And oh, this is already solved. Uh, but if this wasn't, if this didn't happen to be in the right place, then we can use that same trick of sliding two at the same time. So let's go bottom left quadrant now. Uh, this piece is already in the right spot. And to get this piece into position, we can use the same trick, but from a different point of view. So first, move this down so it's off by one. And then, then we can move this immediately next to that. So when we move the cursor up here, just through two slides we can move both pieces into their correct positions. Uh, now let's solve this piece that's supposed to go here, which is this one, uh, and that's, we can just move stuff around to get that there. Next uh, is this piece, which is this one right here, and we'll use the same trick of, well first we want to move this out of the way, uh, in the wrong place. And then move this immediately below that, so then when we move the cursor here, two moves, that's solved. So now we just have the last quadrant remaining. Uh, let's get this piece right, which is this one right here. And then uh, once we slide this into place, the last piece will appear once you solve the puzzle. And now we have a solved puzzle. We got it, and our prize is a church wheel. All right, next to get Chimchar, you would need a Carnivine, which you can catch in Jasper Ward pre or post restoration. And you also need to have, you need 14 badges 
and you need to have donated enough money to fund the Azurai Nature Center and see the guide on getting Bulbasaur to see how to complete those steps. Once you do that, you can head over to the Nature Center. And you can talk to this person in front of the center. Yes, and we give them a Carnivine. And we trade that for a Chimchar Egg. And again, if you walk around enough or use the Incubator, then that will hatch into a Chimchar. Okay, next up is Piplup, and the prerequisites for that is you need access to 7th Street, and this happens after badge number 8. Once you do that, uh, if you haven't picked up the mining kit yet, uh, you need to go do that, and you can do that in the Grand Stairway. And uh, I have not in this save file actually, so yeah, just go up into this cave here, Talk to this guy, he'll demonstrate the process of mining, and hand us the kit. So now... Now we can head over to 7th Street. And you get there by going to Lapis. And if you join the Magma Gang, the entrance is here. If you join the Aqua Gang, it's in the top left corner of the ward. And if you talk to this guy, you can buy Blast Powder. And you need at least one Blast Powder to complete this. So, now we can go to the top right corner of 7th Street. Go right here. So we want to mine the rock, and just to save time, I'm not going to actually mine anything. And then use the blast powder. And what that does is it gets this rock out of the way, so then we can talk to this rock where the quote unquote rare candy is hiding. And the moment we leave, someone will come up to us and steal our quote unquote rare candy. Which, that's not okay, man. Like, drug trafficking is one thing, but like, thievery? Come on. Uh, so, talk to him. He's the guy who stole from us. And then, we, we battle them. And then we can, we get our quote-unquote rare candy back. Then, if we go in here, and talk to this person, uh, and he really wants that quote-unquote rare candy, so we'll give it to them and he'll literally just trade his Pimplum. Which is kind of sad how he's trading his Pokemon, but hey, that's how you get Pimplum. Alright, next up is Snivy, and to get that you need to have 16 badges and to have completed the events of the Battle of a Gate. Once that's done, you can fly over to a gate city and walk into this house right here. There's this hiker who's been sleeping forever. And he's gonna go head over to Route 4, so let's follow him. Oh, by the way, you also need a black belt or an expert belt in your possession to complete this quest. So let's follow him to Route 4. Just uh, traverse a little bit to get to the area where he is hanging out. And there he is. So battle him, and then he'll let his Pokemon out. And the sequence of events we need to follow is first talk to him more, and he'll give me 
Pokesnax, and we can hand over our black belt to Throw. And then Throw gets really happy. And then we feed Altaria, so it turns the other way. And then feed Golem. And then Golem will get really happy, and then uh, Pokemon will run into each other, and yeah. And then, yeah, they got really excited. And he'll go pack. But this event, uh, because Golem slid down this rock here, suddenly this created a spot where we can rock climb. And if we head down into this grass, we can catch Wild Snivy here. Alright, to get Tepig, I believe that all you need is access to Pyrus Mountain. So, if you have that, you can just head over to Apophil Academy and let's walk into the mountain. And, uh, basically we have to go on a little bit of a goose chase, but it's nothing too challenging. First step is, once we get here, we gotta push this strength boulder into that hole. And then if we drop down into it, we see Tepic. So we talked to it, it got spooked and ran away. But fear not, it has only gone to another place. Uh, and to get there, we have to go down here. And it's gone somewhere that's blocked off by this lava, but uh, we can go downstairs and rock smash this to fix that. So now this is open. And then if we go down here, this way, there's Tepic. And it ran away again. But uh, now, we just gotta go to the top of the mountain. So let's head over there now. Let's climb all the way up. And there's Tepig right here, we talk to one final time, and we get into a battle. Alright, next is Ashwat, and the process for getting Ashwat is actually different depending on which gang you decide to join. And in this sort of save file, I joined the Magma Gang, so I'm going to go over that process, and I'll go over the Aqua Gang after. So, the prerequisite for... Ashwat, if you join the Magma Gang, is you need 14 badges, and then you have to complete the entirety of some lengthy quest. So first, uh, we go to Lapis Ward, and we have to get two events out of the way if we haven't done that yet. Uh, the first is uh, is uh, taking revenge on Crodberry. So first, uh, you need to have bought one Pokemon from this market, and I bought Cyndaquil from uh, the Cyndaquil clip. And then if you walk up here, uh, we see a scene of Crodberry uh, really uh, just being her insulting self, and then Maxwell's like, that's like, I'm not gonna let this happen, I'm not gonna let her just treat us like that. So then we form a plot uh, to go to her house and defeat her. So let's go back up, and there's Maxwell's waiting out here and just says, the floor is mine, so let's go and, and defeat her in battle. Okay, and then yeah, there's this cutscene here, and then uh, Crodberry just gets back into a corner. And now that that is done, we get the TM for Sunny Day as a reward. And then there's one more event that we have to do if we haven't done that yet. And that is Defeat Archer. So if we go here, into this room, there's Archer right here. We talk to him, and he just wants to defeat us. And then, I'm just gonna skip through this, and we get the TM for Rain Dance. 
Okay, and that gets two prerequisite events out of the way. You may have done that already. And now, Maxwell is just hanging out in the bottom left corner of 7th Street. And we talk to him, and it's, uh, he's basically talking about how he wants people to get jobs. Uh, but, uh, a lot of them don't want to get jobs, so we're here to help them with that. Yeah, and then we can talk to each of them just to see their interests and what kind of job might interest them. And he wants to a job where he can mix things, maybe like a chemist kind of deal. So that's something. And then this guy uh, does not want a job because there's no job cool enough for him. So the hint is we want a cool job. And he wants a job where he can flex and stuff like that. Alright, and there's one guy in the elevator. And he said that he's he's not cut for work and uh, he likes food, so that's a hint. Alright, and then now we can go pick up the appropriate applications for them. Uh, I can fly over to North Obsidian Ward and the cool job is at the nightclub, so we talk to this person, and they'll uh, they'll give me a nightclub application. And then uh, the guy who said that he can, can't really do anything except cook and stuff, uh, we can pick up an application for the spice. And then over here, the person who wants a chemistry kind of job, uh, we got a medicine application for that. And there's one additional application that I'm going to get out of the way now just to save time, but we are going to need this to finish the quest. Uh, but a prerequisite for that is to donate to the Affordable Living in Obsidia project. So once we donate that amount of money, that will convert the slums in Self Obsidia Ward to a building, like an actual shelter. And we can go into this building and pick up this Solace application. And last but not least, uh, if we fly over to a gate circus, we can pick up a circus application right here. Okay, now we can return to Lapis Ward and deliver all those applications. Uh, the guy in the elevator, we go use the use the um, the spice application, and he's like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And then, uh, the guy who likes mixing stuff, we use the medicine application on him. And if you return to Meganium's shop, he'll actually be attending the counter. Uh, the guy who's complaining about no jobs being cool, uh, we show him the nightclub application. The guy who likes the flex, uh, give him the circus application. And we found everyone in his gang a job, so we can talk to Maxwell again. But, uh, he wants a job too. Uh, but, and the Solace application fits his needs, so we can show that to him. And after sticking it out with this lengthy quest, we earn an Ashwa. And to get an Ashwat, if you join the Aqua Gang, the process is much simpler, but you have to wait until later, slightly later in the game. So, you would need to have completed 16 badges and to have completed the events of the Battle of a Gate. Once you do that, you can fly over to a Gate City. You also need an Orangaroo, which you can catch in North Adventurine Woods. And if we go to a house in the top right corner of the city, talk to this guy right here, and he's willing to trade an Oshawa for an Orangaroo. So, we complete the trade, and 
Yeah, we have an Oshawa now. And Chespin is available after you have 9 badges, and you actually start here in Lapis Ward. Uh, if you go into the flower shop, you can buy a floral charm, and you would need this to access an item that you need in a quest. So afterward, you can fly over to Van Han Castle, and then just work your way south through part of Route 1. Or west. And then after you go through this bit where you go briefly into South Adventure Ryan Woods, we return to Route 1 and immediately enter this entrance here. And it is possible that there might be a log blocking uh, just a little bit farther, a little bit up this ledge. If that is the case, then you need to defeat a Toro so the Bufalon will come charging through and push the log uh, forward. Afterward, you need to defeat a Bufalon so a Tauros will let you ride it and you can go up this ledge. Uh, now we can dismount. And then right here, there is a flower that normally, I, I like to call it the soft lock, preventing flower. It will just make you fall asleep and teleport you back to Route 1. But if you have the floral charm, we can actually use it, and we get in a battle with a flip alien. And the important thing is, we're not put to sleep, so we can keep going. And right here at the end, I think there's a hidden item, and that is the Oddish Root. And when we do that, we can return to Lapis Ward. And go into 7th Street. And remember, if you're in the Aqua Gang, instead of the Magma Gang, the entrance is in the northwest corner. Go down here, and talk to her, and she needs a place to she needs an item to cure her husband, and our, our Oddish Weed just so happens to be exactly what she needs. And as a reward, we get a Chespin Egg. Alright, next up is Fennekin, and that can be acquired after you have 12 badges and have completed the events of the Water Treatment Center. Once that's done, we can re-enter the Water Treatment Center. And then go one room to the left. So go down here, and surf. Yeah, and if this computer is lighting up, you might need to click it to unlock a room. And the Fennekin can be acquired in this room. And you would get it by talking to this machine, but it's not responding right now. And in order to get it to respond, we would need to, in battle, change this short circuit field into a factory field. And that can be done when using any of these moves, and the battle needs to end in the factory field. So we can get in this battle with this Electrode. And I'll go use Discharge. And now we got a factory field. And now the machine's restarted. We can click this and withdraw a Fennekin. And this is Ace's Fennekin. And we can view Ace's message. Alright, to get Froki, you need to have finished the events of the Battle of the Gate, and that gives you access to a Gate City. And this is, uh, so in a Gate City, there is a person named B who lives there. She's right here, and she's talking about uh, completing the Pokedex. And you get rewards for every 100 Pokemon that you catch. And a Froki is the reward for if you have caught at least 200 Pokemon. So yeah, once you do that, you can get Froki from this house. Alright, next up is Relit, 
and to get Rowlet, you need to have 14 badges and you need to have access to the desert, as a Rowlet egg is located deep within Tanzan or Technite Ridge, which is accessible from the northwest corner of the desert. Uh, so once you have once you've met those expectations, I think the best place to fly would be to the, be the scrapyard. And you also need someone on your team that knows Tailwind uh, to be able to access the Rowlet Egg. And if you have not done the Tech Knight Cave Puzzle yet, you also need Pokemon with moves that can convert between a Cavern Field and a Crystal Cavern. So just follow these tracks until we sort of get close to the cave, and there it is. And now there's Tech Knight Cave, and I've already done the puzzle in this save file, but if you haven't done it yet, what you would need to do is, in the field notes, there's the cave field, and you would need a move, so Diamond Storm or Power Gem, that would convert to a Crystal Cavern, and you would need one of these moves to convert a crystal cavern back to a cave. Basically, what happens is, uh, this is a dead end initially, but uh, if you change the cave to a crystal, or if you use a move that changes the cave field to a crystal cavern in battle, after that battle ends, it will also change the overworld, and you can you can access a crystal key that can make, that makes this wall breakable. And basically, when walking through, there will be obstacles. If it is a normal cave field and you are blocked by some rock or a dead end, chances are, if you change it to a crystal cavern, then uh, there will be crystal keys that appear that allow you to break certain rocks or allow you to break walls to progress. Likewise, if you're in a crystal cavern, and if you if there's a place where a crystal is blocking your path, you can use a move to convert that to a normal cave. And uh, when that battle is over, the crystal will disappear. So that's how to get through. And our destination area is this outdoor area right here. And uh, the first step here is you need to use Tailwind in battle, and that will make it so the Sandstorm gets converted to just uh, having high-speed winds, and that will allow you to jump farther than you would be able to otherwise. And I'm just waiting for my Repel to run off. To wear off? Okay. Cancel. So now, uh, wait till we get an encounter. Uh, we use Tailwind. And now that affects the outside, a strong gust picked up, and I'm just going to put a repel back on. And if we follow this path right here... Yeah, and some of these jumps would not be possible if the wind was not this high. So we need a tailwind to be able to access the area. And we go around here, and right up here is a Rowlet Egg. So once we take that and hatch it, we will have a Rowlet. Alright, next up is Litten. And just like with Ashwat, the process for acquiring Litten is different whether or not you join the Magma or the Aqua Gang. If you join the Magma Gang, you need to have access to a gate city, so that's after completing the events of the Battle of a Gate. And once that's done, uh, you also need to have a Basculin in your party, and you can catch one of those underwater in Tanzan Cove. Uh, because you can trade that Basculin for a Lit. So talk to so go to the top left house and talk to this lady right here. And she's willing to trade a Basculin for a Lit, so let's go ahead and do that. 
And now we have acquired Lynn. And if you join the Aqua Gang instead, getting Litten is a lot more complicated, but you can get it earlier in the game. As soon as after you complete your 14th batch. So after that's all done, there are two prerequisite events. Uh, there is one uh, getting revenge on Crodberry, and another one is defeating Maxwell for the last time. And the getting revenge on Crodberry event, I actually finished in this save file. Uh, if you want to see the clip for it, uh, it's in the clip for getting Oshwat if you're in the Magma Gang, just uh, with Archer instead of Maxwell. And the next step after that, if you have not done that yet, is to go into this uh, little cave-ish area here, and then talk to Maxwell here, and defeat him. Once you do that, yeah, you get a TM for Sunny Day, and now we are ready to begin the job applications quest that will reward us with a Litten at the end. So there's Archer right here, and if you talk to him, uh, he's just talking about how yeah he wants everyone to get jobs now, but uh, no one wants to or feels like they should get jobs. So. Uh, so we know the situation, and then we can go talk to everyone and figure out what everyone's interests might be. So, let's see, you... You don't like talking to people, and you just want to go somewhere quiet. So, that's... keep that in mind. And you... And you want something maybe a bit more intellectual. I, yeah, you. Yeah, you want somewhere exciting with lots of good food. So, and then if there's one poor person in the elevator. And he wants a job with specific instructions. So those are the clues we have. Now let's pick up the necessary applications. Uh, first I'm going to go fly to Obsidia. And person who wants a place upbeat with good food, well, sweet company is that. So we can talk to this person right here, and we can get an application for sweet. And then Sylph, uh, it's, this isn't an application for any of those four people we talked to, but it is necessary to finish the quest, and I'm just going to get it now to save time. So we'll take an application for Sylph. And then the person who wants specific instructions, uh, the construction job uh, does that. So we can talk to this person and get a construction application. And then someone who wanted something a bit more intellectual, uh, we can go to Barrel Ward and go to the library. And pick up an application here. And finally, the person who just wanted something someplace quiet, we can go to a pop hole and talk to this person. And yeah, they, they want more students, so... So they're just gonna give me three applications all at once, which I'm not gonna complain. And now we've acquired all the necessary applications, we can return to Lepus. And go first, we can go to that elevator. And you said you wanted something with specific instructions, so I'll give you the construction application. And you're like, yeah, ooh, that's dope. So that's one. And then you wanted a upbeat place with good food, so I'll give you the sweet application. And you wanted something more intellectual, so I'll give you the library application. And yeah, and if you ever need more blast powder, now uh, you can just go to the library and 
even though he's working there, he'll still sell you blast powder. Just kind of funny. Uh, and then, last but not least, uh, you wanted some place where you can be peaceful, so I'll give you the Apophil Academy application. And he goes. So now, we found something for everyone, and now Archer wants a job too. Uh, and Sylph matches his qualifications. So, yeah, and I guess the Aqua Gang, yeah, that is experience with management, which is interesting. And as a prize for doing this, we get a lit. Alright, so last but not least, we have Poplio. And Poplio is accessible after you have access to Neo Reborn City, which is after badge 13. And you can fly to the Coral Ward. And if you go left here, uh, and there's this small lighthouse structure here. And if you just surf right behind it, just out of view, there's actually a hidden dive spot. And when you go here, you can uh, go up this ladder, and right here is the Coral Key, which you can use to unlock this lighthouse. So we go in, we dive down, and we see this Poplio getting bullied by a hunter for this, so we battle them to chase them off, and then Poplio will join us. And yeah, that concludes all 21 starters. I hope this guide was helpful. And now that if you got all of them, you can then proceed to breed them and complete the starter egg quest in the basement of Grand Hall. Because when you give an egg for each of the 21 starters to uh, a person in the starter Pokemon storage room, then you will earn the TM for Earthquake, the Garchompite, and a Psychium Z. So yeah, thanks for watching.